Bloodroot is a serious disease of canola and of other crops in the brassica family. Cabbage, broccoli, and even weeds such as stinkweed. Growth of infected roots is disrupted, resulting in distinctive club symptoms on plant roots. Water and nutrient uptake is restricted by clubbed roots and can result in reduced seed production, stunting and premature death of the plant. If this pathogen becomes established in the soil throughout a field, serious yield loss can occur. Club root is caused by an organism called Plasmodiophora brassicae. It is an unusual organism in that it does not easily fit into the standard classifications of life. It is not quite a fungus, an amoeba, or even a slime mold, but it has some characteristics of each of these very different groups. The unusual nature of this organism is what makes it a challenge to control. Plasmodiophora brassicae starts its life cycle as a resting spore. This spore, although very small, is remarkably hardy and can persist in the soil for up to 20 years. The resting spores are normally found in the upper layers of soil, which is the prime location to begin the actual infection process. Plant roots continually exude a range of chemicals and nutrients into the soil. Most of the resting spores remain dormant in the soil until substances released from a nearby rootlet stimulate them to germinate. The resting spore undergoes cell division and changes from a hardened survival structure into a fragile, short-lived zoospore, which has two hair-like flagella that it uses to swim towards a root hair. In wet soil, the newly formed zoospores swim from soil particle to particle in a film of water until they find and infect a root hair. When the soil is dry, the zoospores are trapped in place and unable to infect root hairs. This is why club root levels are generally low in dry years, even in fields where an abundance of resting spores are present. The zoospore swims in soil water until it contacts a root hair, settles on the surface, and penetrates the wall of the root hair. The more resting spores that are present near the roots, the more root hairs become infected. Once inside a root hair, the zoospore develops into an amoeba-like structure called a plasmodium. The plasmodium grows rapidly and matures within a few days, and then produces new zoospores that are released back into the soil environment. This is the stage where club root resistance operates. The root hairs of both susceptible and resistant plants are infected by the primary zoospores, but the flush of these secondary zoospores from the root hairs are not able to infect and develop into the root of resistant plants. That is why club root does not develop in resistant plants. Secondary zoospores initiate the root symptoms that cause yield loss in infected plants. Large numbers of these zoospores can be produced in the root hairs. They infect the entire root surface, not just the root hairs. After infection, these zoospores differentiate into plasmodia that grow and reproduce rapidly and spread deep into the root tissue. As cells become infected and enlarged, the root no longer functions properly in the absorption and the translocation of water and nutrients to the above ground parts of the plant. This is where yield is lost. The earlier the infection and the greater the number of secondary zoospores, the greater the yield loss. The plasmodia also alter hormone balances within the root. The plant interprets this as a signal to grow more root tissue, 
which it does in abundance. This is how the clubbed roots form. The root swelling can become very large, further hindering normal root function and providing more tissue for the pathogen to infect. When the root is severely infected, the performance of the canola plant is greatly affected. Plants wilt and die prematurely, allowing weeds to utilize unused nutrients and sunlight. Plants that are only lightly infected are still capable of producing some yield, but any infected root leaves behind a legacy for even more severe infections to come. Even before the plant begins to die, the pathogen starts forming new resting spores. The plasmodia, which filled up the plant cells, start dividing into the tiny spores, thousands to ten thousands per cell. We can easily see how billions of resting spores can be produced from a single infected root. As the root senesces, they quickly decay and the masses of resting spores are released back into the soil, waiting for the next crop or susceptible plants to stimulate germination and start the process again. Normally, these resting spores will remain in one patch of the field. However, this pathogen can, unfortunately, exploit our need to work the soil. As we till or seed the soil, we are spreading the pathogen through the field and may inadvertently be transporting it to new fields as well.